That's an old habit I have to break because I used to always do that. Every lead would start off right here. I want to shoot up high to get out of it, out of the rhythm, so you go high. That should go higher then, right? Thank you. 
show did with trick or treat you know mandy lion everybody knows the mandy lion he's got always wears a hat and he's got extensions down here yes they're extensions so we're gonna rehearse like for a couple of weeks before our first gig which happens to be on st patrick's day good good show it was a good time to have a show 1987 so we go out there playing we bust we only have seven songs so we're gonna go to third first the three first opening he comes out of a coffin we all come out scary looking because this is a scary time now everybody's glammed out of their minds but we're totally opposite so we bust through the first three songs boom 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 we got flash pots going off confetti cannons gargoyles with smoke spewing out it. it's on you can find it on video look under uh, trick or treat at the troubadour 1987 I had to put it under an, another uh, account because Mandy was throwing a tizzy fit about it being up because he's such a pussy. Anyways, so this is the first show. When I saw him at the rehearsal, he had hair down to here. So, you know, first three songs. And I go, after the first, first three songs, stop. And then we all stare at the audience. Hopefully they'll either be clapping or in shock. Either one. So, I hear this gasp, because Mandy came out with, well, you know, I couldn't tell how long his hair was, but he didn't have a hat. It was all puffed up, and he had tons of makeup on, and it was cool looking weird. And, you know, me and Tony and Rudy looked, you know, motley, you know, shout out the devil looking. Except some stripper threw a red thing around my neck. I hated that thing, but she'd always do that. Just before I was going on, and I could never seem to get it off, so I just kept it on there. So, first three songs, everybody's quiet, gasp. I look over at Tony, I'm like, yeah, look at this. This is it. And he's looking at Mandy. And I'm like, why is he staring at Mandy's, well, why, I know why he's staring at Mandy's ass, but he's got a jacket on. So I look over, and Mandy is standing there in a leather G-string. Basically, the, uh, you know, Prince controversy, leather G-string with uh, thigh-high leather boots. Nothing new, but it was the metal version. And I'm like, ooh, 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 we better kick some ass. So we went into the next four devil songs and then ended it with uh, War Machine by Kiss. And it killed. We killed them. And it was a pretty good turnout. In the middle of the week, you know, there was no bad time really, and uh, and it was St. Patrick's Day. Plus, it was filmed, so then they broadcast it on this thing that was shown all over L.A. Uh, hosted by Ton Mastery. She was a KNAC uh, DJ, and uh, tons of calls came in, flooding in. So they book us again. We want you back as soon as possible. I'm like. So three other clubs want us. So we're going to go down to Joshua's in Anaheim because I've never played there. I want to play there. Then we'll come back up and we'll play you guys next Saturday, Friday or Saturday. I can't remember. And he goes, we're going to put you together with uh, Michael Angelo. I'm like, no, no. You know, I don't want to go up against the guitar dude because he thinks he's all, he and he is better than me. But I didn't want it. But got it anyway. So it was packed. Second, third show. This is the third show we're doing. And I'm thinking, we got it made. We've got offers by Capital. we got a demo. Offer to go in and cut a demo with them. Uh, we just we need to send them four songs. We sent them. Yeah, we we're going to send them four songs. So we recorded everything. We just needed his butt down there to put the vocals on it. 
But all he cared about was him and his stupid little Foozle, which is his little poodle he called Foozle, and his hair extensions. How's he going to keep the extensions in, and how's he going to protect his dog? That's all he cared about. He didn't was thinking about the band, always thinking about himself. Himself first, and then everything else later. Didn't bother telling us nothing. So we're booking, like, shows for months were booked. He leaves. Goes to another band. The band craps out immediately. Goes to another band. Craps out. Uh, then he puts together World War Three with uh, that Chet Thompson guy, and, and they killed. They were just selling everywhere out. And I'm like, oh my gosh, well, you know, whatever. He did it. Then he gets signed with Hollywood Records. Hollywood Records says, we're going to, we'll take you, but we're going to bring in, you know, Vinny, a piece, or Apice, and Jimmy Bain, basically Dio's band, and we're going to find the next new guitar player. He goes, well, I got Chet Thompson. He is the new, next new guitar. Well, he's got... He actually had, uh, was working, he did all the guitar stuff for Back to the Future and all that stuff, so he was a working musician. He, they didn't want that, because he already had stuff going on, and copyrights, and this and that and the other. So they figured they get a nobody, Tracy G. And I, it worked out, but this is the whole funny thing. So they were the first band to be signed to Hollywood Records. They make, put out the album, the lyrics are horrible, every... This is 1990. Every every review was ripping him to shreds. Hollywood Records, though, is backing him. This is Disney. So they get put on the Iron Maiden tour. The first show in L.A., they pick up Irvine. So Hollywood Records is putting tons of money. In, so you get a poster and a cassette with four songs, World War Three, as you're walking in. So everybody's walking in. You know, they want to get there early because... It's World War Three. Somebody Anthrax and uh, what you call it? Iron Maiden. So World War Three starts. You know, uh, Time for Terror. I think it is. And Tracy G freezes up. He can't. He's not playing. So Vinny starts throwing drumsticks at him, and everybody just starts boom, boo, you suck, boo, because no one knows who these guys are. This is the real world. All these cassette tapes come flying up. They're bouncing off Mandy. Bounce, and and Jimmy Bain starts walking off. And then he was pushed back out. They're like, no. And someone went out and, you know, pushed, did something to uh, Tracy. And he just starts playing. But he never moved. He was like this. He looked straight down at the stage. He never moved. He played it. They played like five songs and boop, off. Second show, same thing. Third show, bing, he was off. They got thrown off the label. Everything done. We're not. We don't have time to babysit you. We don't have time. We don't need you. You need us. Goodbye. We're going to save us a lot of money by kicking you out now. And you know, Vinny went to Black Sabbath to record uh, the next album with Dio, uh, Dehumanizer. Everybody went on. But Mandy went into was a recluse because he blew it but he won't you will never hear this story from him he goes out and he lives in kentucky with this really stripper he's not an american he's he came in through canada he's not legal so he marries this ugly stripper lives in a cabin in the middle of nowhere for like 10 years comes back here in like 99 into hollywood calls me says he's living in someone's basement and will I come and help him? I'm like, okay, fine. So I come there and visit him. I'm like, dude, you live in, it's you and this ugly dog. So he's gone from Foozle to these mastiff ugly things. I'm like, no, dude, uh-uh, uh-uh. And he's drinking, drinking, drinking bottles of, you know, he used to yell at me and the other guys, never drink, don't drink, drink is for losers, blah, blah, blah. I'll drink it for losers. He talked like uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. You know, every, I always saw these girls, she was so fat, like hippopotamus. I go, you mean hippopotamus? Yeah, whatever. Yeah, it's hippopotamus, not hippopotamus. But then, you know, we call all fat girls hippopotamus because it was funny. You know, anyway. So there's a quick story because I've been running on half hour things, so can't be doing that all the time. So let me do just a little, little outro because I didn't really play anything. And uh, here's your story. Not much uh, sex and violence in, involved. 
just that Mandy has blown it over and over and over and over. And the last time when I got us a record deal to go in and put out Trick or Treat, not Satanic, but just Trick or Treat with me and him and two other whoever, studio guys. He wanted to be in charge. I said, no, Trick or Treat is my band. We'll both do it together or forget it. He says, forget it. Well, he hasn't put out an album since 1990 or 2000, 99. That's it. No one will touch him. He's an idiot. He lives in Vegas in a house that he bought from the money he got from his, his mom. He's never done anything. He's, he's all... no. T he's Now, he used to have talent. Nothing's dried up, washed up, stupid. He's had the golden key given to him several times, and he's dropped it or thrown it. I've driven him to meetings with Sharon Osbourne and her brother and to set up a for thing for this new band, and new... He blows that. I'm like, unbelievable. This guy is just a living mutton head. Just an idiot. So he does, He had his chance, and he really had it with Trick or Treat, because we were going to go on a tour immediately, and it all went to shit. So screw Mandy Lyon. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.